Welcome back to Open Line. We are talking movies. We have with us the film critic from the Nashville scene, Jason Shahan. Uh, several calls. So let's go back uh, to the phones here. Let's go to Rob. Hello, Rob. Yes, good evening, guys. Uh, enjoyed your commentary this evening. Thank I have you. a question about the movie uh, I, Tanya. Mm -hmm. I've seen the previews for it, and it looks incredible. Uh, Margot Robbie, a big fan of hers. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've noticed there weren't any film uh, times uh, in the Nashville area. But just wanted to know, Jason, if you've seen it and what your thoughts are on that movie. Um, well, here's the thing about uh, I, Tanya. It starts on January 4th. Uh, part, part of the problem with a lot of the big awards titles is their platform releases. So they'll open in New York and L.A. ages before anywhere else. And then look, Nashville is not the bottom rung of the ladder on that. And we're not next to the bottom rung, but we're next to, next to the bottom rung. So, yeah, January 4th is when it's opening. It's an incredible performance. And it's an, actually a deliciously controversial film because like a lot of the discussion that's been happening you know a lot of people are like oh the acting is great um, but they have a lot of people have issues with the tone because you know it's about trying to reconcile uh, two disparate narratives that involve domestic violence and a lot of very class oriented issues which you know American film doesn't usually get into um, so it's like it's it's deeply controversial and it's it's coming on January 4th uh, and it's uh, she is amazing it, like you would never in a million years guess that she was Australian like I, every time I read that I keep I'm just like oh that's right she's Australian it happened with uh, Wolf of Wall Street as well I mean like she's just an incredible performer so that's I mean I'm looking here I see it's nominated mm -hmm. in Golden Globe for musical or comedy yeah so is that an, is that a, is it a comedy? Um, I mean, well, it's a comedy that has a lot of domestic violence in it. So does that answer your question? <laughs> no. That I mean, is that's not. the thing. Yeah, it's it's something that people have to watch and decide for themselves. The Disaster Artist, another mm -hmm. movie um, that's nominated, I see, for musical or comedy. Mm -hmm. um, what it, what's the the word on on the disaster artist. Well, I mean, it's a phenomenon. It's doing really, really well. Um, I mean, it's a, if if it's based on the making of uh, this film called The Room, which plays midnights at least once or twice a year here in town. Um, it's uh, it's One a these cult classics. Fascinating, terrible, un indescribable, inescapable film about a uh, romantic obsession and so you know like a bunch of like basically everybody in the disaster artist has a podcast of some form or another and they they, they made a really entertaining um comedy about the making of this like work of absolute insanity and um it's there's there's a lot of great performances in it and it's very funny it tones down uh, the book of the same title that it's based on quite a little bit just because um it, you would have to for people to be able to enjoy it uh but um <laughs> it's entertaining i think it's well done i saw uh -huh. it it's entertaining it's well done it's not necessarily important or anything yeah it's, but it's, it's but it's you know it's entertaining yeah and it's, well and it's good it helps you understand why uh, the room has this sort of endearing and endearing and enduring quality, much like you know the Rocky Horror Picture Show, uh, like of of something that people for years and years still go to and find something new in. So when we start talking about performances, mm -hmm. um, best actor, best actress, what are some of the performances that really stand out um, for you? Um, oh God, where to begin? Um, Mary J. Blige in Mudbound, which is on Netflix right now, and everyone should see it. Um, that's an incredible performance. Uh, really good cinematography as well. Uh, directed by former Nashvilleian D. Rees. So uh, that I watched that. It's already it's already on Netflix. Why Netflix, is it already on Netflix? Netflix paid for it. Okay. Like it's, Netflix released it. Mm -hmm. It played a week at the Bell Court as sort of like a sort of a limited run uh, to sort of build theatrical awareness for it. But I mean, it was always a Netflix film. And so it's being nominated. Mm -hmm. um, well, she was nominated. Um, Mary J. Blige mm -hmm. was nominated at the Golden Globes for yeah. I think supporting actress. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a. That's a good movie. It's yeah, it's an incredible performance, and it's and because it's on Netflix, like that's that's the thing. Because the streaming services have sort of stepped up with uh, and become their own like bankrollers and making their own content. There's a lot of really good films on those. Like um, like Amazon has The Big Sick, which is a delightful romantic comedy with uh, Kumail Nanjiani and Holly Hunter and Ray Romano. That one's great. Uh, Netflix, uh, in addition to um, Mudbound, it's got uh, an amazing French film called. Called Nocturama that will make you really, really angry in the best possible way, um, and uh, 
uh, a great film that won the uh, audience award at uh, Sundance last year called I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore. And it's about a woman who, um, you know, she's just trying to get by and be a decent human being, and someone breaks into her house and steals her grandma's plates. And so she she just decides, all right, I'm going to find these. And she, like, delves into, like, you know, the dark side of the criminal underworld of her, like, little... Uh, Portland town in in Oregon and it's great and it's on Netflix and you could watch it tonight if you wanted um, Elijah Wood is in it uh, Melanie Linsky stars in it it's um it's a stunning film very Coen Brothersy very violent very funny but like it it's one of my when people say like what film says the most about America right now to you and I'm like oh I don't feel at home in this world anymore go with that <laughs> <laughs> and so all right I I like to focus on the Academy Awards and, uh -huh. and I wonder you said this year's really up. Mm -hmm. We don't really know. Yeah. And the, and so much is happening in in the world, mm -hmm. in our country, in the mo in the in the movie industry. Mm -hmm. You know, with all of the revelations that have come out. Mm -hmm. So I wonder what do you think which way will they go? Are they going to go more serious? Are they going to go totally we need a break from all this more comedy, lighthearted? I mean, what what do you think? I think um what you're going to see is a lot more disparate voices. I think you're gonna you're gonna see a lot more films uh, made by women. I think you're gonna see a lot more films made by people of color. Um, I think you're gonna see because those films <coughs> broke through and made ridiculous amounts of money, like Get Out, like Wonder Woman, like Lady Bird, you know, which is a micro budget film, but it's like it's been in the top ten movies in the country every week since it came out. I mean, there's the these there's an audience for these, and it's. You know, it's it's just basically like you know, let's let's diversify the voices. Like you know, nobody's saying like, oh, no more of this. It's just like, you know, there's always enough money to make a big shootout at the special effects warehouse movie. So you know, just take a little off of that and bankroll some other stuff. And there's some like, well, again, and it's just like I'm not I'm not like woohoo Netflix or anything, but. Um, Angelina Jolie, who is a movie star and who is known for that, is also an incredible director. And she made a film this year called First They Killed My Father, um, based on the, the true story of a young Cambodian girl who survived the Khmer Rouge. Um, and it's, it's on Netflix right now, and it's absolutely amazing. Like, if, it's one of those things that if, if she had released it under a pseudonym, like, she would be, like, everyone would just be like, who is this amazing director and who can work so well with children and can tell these, like, devastating stories but not let it, let it grind you down? And it just, you know, she doesn't get any respect as a director. Although, she's, she got a Golden Globe nomination for Best Foreign Language Film because it's all in Khmer. Hmm. And, um, and that's just sort of like, like, if you've never gotten to see any of the films that she's directed, because she did uh, Unbreakable, uh, about the true story of the mm -hmm. guy who was a POW in World War II. She did um, uh, uh, her first film, uh, In the Land of Blood and Honey, was about the, uh, the Bosnian conflict. And it is absolutely devastating and totally incredible. And then the film she made, she did her Eyes Wide Shut with Brad before they split up called uh, By the Sea. And it's great. It's like one of the old uh, Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton movies from the 60s. Um, and it is, it's just amazing when you want to see like um, interesting people just rip their marriage apart over <laughs> drinks on the French Riviera and all that. All right, we're going to take a break. Then we'll okay. come back. We'll, five movies that okay. people should see before the end of the year uh, from you. We'll take a break. We'll be back right after this. All right.